Hi, I'm Niall from Gulfstream Boat Sales. Today I want to show you a Doral Monte Cello sports cruiser. This one was built uh, by the Canadian Yard in 2004. It's fitted with a Mercruiser diesel engine and it comes complete with this uh, triple axle SBS UK spec road trailer. Doral's are a very high quality boat uh, and this one's no exception. Although it's their entry level uh, cruiser model, it's literally packed full of nice little design touches, innovative features, um, and you can really see the you know the quality of the boat really comes through whenever you're taking a look around it. So there's lots to go through. There's loads of stuff I, I want to show you on the boat. So we'll get straight to it. We'll have a look through all the, the details and features on board. We'll show you how the boat runs in the water, um, and if you've any interest in it, you can get in touch with us. Taking a look down along the port side of the boat, it is in super condition. The gel coat has a, a really nice luster to it. <clears throat> there's no ripples or, or evidence of any damage that I can find. There's a couple of very minor little scratch here um, and there's another little, uh, little gel coat repair here. It's obviously probably just birthing damage. It's entirely normal on a boat of this age and it's really nothing to worry about. But apart from that, the boat looks fantastic. I mean, you'll only really see this whenever you're walking around the boat. Even whenever you the boat in the marina, you'd never even notice that type of thing. The, all the stainless steel work is in great condition. All the fixtures and fittings, the cleats and things, the Doral name, the, the handrails, are, they're all totally solid and secure. Um, they're undamaged and there's no evidence of any corrosion on it either. This boat has been, the current owner who's had the boat for about three or four seasons, has kept it in fresh water the entire time. So um, and it looks, you know, it has the hallmarks of a fresh water boat. There's very little corrosion anywhere throughout the boat. If anything, the starboard side is probably uh, cleaner than the port side. Um, just want to point out, you know this is stainless steel anchor roller up here? Um, again, a, touch, a really nice high quality touch on the boat. We've got this uh, stainless steel uh, rub rail insert as well, which again is virtually unmarked. There's no, there's no major scuffs or scrapes or any corrosion uh, on that rail. Um, and then yeah, the gel coat down this side is perfect as well. Really nice shine to it. No evidence of any damage that I can find. The hull bottom uh, is in good condition as well. Again, we can't find any evidence of any damage or anything, but the anti-fouling paint will need refreshed for the, for the beginning of the next season. The trailer that the boat is sitting on was bought by the current owner, so it's, it, it's not original to the boat. It's a perfect match for it, and it does the job extremely well, but it's a lot newer. Um, I think it was bought about three years ago, and it's only ever been in fresh water. The, boat, the current owner has only ever used the boat in fresh water, so um, you can tell that the trailer is like brand new. The hitch and everything, it's still, it's still shiny. There's no corrosion or anything on it. It's a triple axle trailer, so it spreads the weight nicely. It's got a spare wheel on there, and it's got integrated uh, tailboard holders and things. So if you're thinking about buying a boat like this to tow it around the country or, or possibly take it to different cruising grounds during the season, um, this trailer is fantastic. It's fully road legal in the UK. Uh, the brakes and everything are still working on it. It's, it's just top notch. It would cost around about four thousand pounds, or maybe even more now, to buy a trailer like this. So the fact that it's included in the price um, is a great selling point for this boat, and something that, that if you want a trailer, um, something to bear in mind if you're comparing this to, to other boats that don't have trailers. So um, yeah, it's, it's great condition. This boat is um, just over 28 foot long with the swim platform. So the hull is about 26 feet, and then we've got this integrated swim platform, which is literally huge. Um, it, the actual width of the platform itself is probably closer to nearly, well, at least three feet, maybe a bit more, because it actually goes a little bit recessed into the, the hull of the boat. Um, it's finished with the, the stainless steel uh, rub rail insert around the platform. It has a synthetic teak. Um, uh, deck covering on it so it, it really looks the part and it's low maintenance as well. And then we've got this stainless steel handrail and we've got a folded stainless steel board ladder as well. Um, so the condition here is really good. There's one little bit of stress cracking um, just on this uh, port quarter. Uh, again this is a common area that, that can tend to take a little knock in the, in the marina and things but this is pretty minor. There's no, I mean, there's a very little, it's very like mark on the, on the, uh, the actual rub rail itself. So uh, it looks like a 
very minor impact. And it's just you get this creation as, as a result of that. But it's nothing to worry about. That's literally the, the worst damage that, that you can find anywhere on the boat that I can find. Looking at the steering right here, uh, as I said, it's got a Merit Cruiser 4.2 litre, um, 250 horsepower. Uh, diesel engine and it's matched up to this uh, Bravo 3 stern drive. Um, looks to be in pretty good, good condition. It probably does need a lick of paint um, just to tidy it up a little bit. Uh, but apart from that, it, uh, it's shifting in and out of gear really well. The boat's running really good. We've had it in the water already. And you'll see in the video later on just how well she's going. And she also has is fitted with the trim, trim tabs there. Condition of the anodes and things is all good as well, um, which takes care of any corrosion issues. On the underwater gear. For what is essentially a 26 foot boat, this swim platform is literally huge. It makes boarding the boat so easy because you can get on and off no problem from either side of the, um, the dock. And if you're swimming off the boat, or even if you're pulling a water toy or um, looking to store a dinghy or something out here, it's just a really useful addition to have and really extends the living space on board. We've got a couple of storage lockers here in the transom. We've also got a pull out uh, transom dryer, hot cold water. And we've got little concealed cleats in here too. So the pop up cleats um, for tying up the, the, the stair in the boat. And whenever they're not in use, you can pop them out of the way so you're not going to stub a toe or anything on them. Access into the cockpit from the swim platform is through this lockable transom door. Uh, and then the actual layout in here is. It's, it's fantastic really. We've got a, a wraparound U shaped uh, seating area here at the transom around this uh, nice hardwood table. We've got a port side lounger. We've got space just behind that here where I'm standing to store uh, a cool box. We've got a couple of little you know, straps and fittles there to, to keep uh, any gear you want to store here in place. And then we've got a twin wide uh, helm seat as well with a flip up bolster. One of the main selling points of the Dural Monticello is its versatile use of space. And one of the best ways it does that is with this uh, sliding rear seat arrangement. So there's a catch underneath this seat and this whole back seat is on, uh, is on runner. So we just pull it back. The mechanism works really good actually as well. Um, there's a little fuller cushion that goes in here. And this basically gives you um, much more room in the cockpit, a lot more floor space. A lot more room to get around the table, and, and you can also squeeze in a, a, probably another adult. So you you can easily fit five people around this table with the um, with the cockpit it's extended like this. And because that swim platform is so big, you don't even lose much out the back. You've still got a full width platform right the way across the back of this seat, um, and it's still nice and safe out here. So what this really does is give you a cockpit on a 26 foot boat that rivals that of like something that's closer to 30 foot in, uh, in size. So, uh, and then whenever you don't need it, if you want to swim off the back or you want to store your dinghy on the transom, on the swim platform, you can just slide it back in um, and uh, you get the best of both worlds. It's, it's a really great feature. And again, the quality comes through. The upholstery, right the way throughout the, the cockpit's in very good condition. The quality of stitching and things is top notch. Uh, the fact that this, this seat still slides with minimal effort, on a boat that's built in 2004, it is a testament to how well the thing was constructed at the time. Um, and uh, yeah, this is just the first of many neat little design touches we're going to show you through the boat. The next thing I want to show you is the is the radar arch on the boat, which it's forward facing. It was really bang up to date whenever the boat was built in 2004, and it still looks super modern. I mean, this boat could easily pass for something that's two or three years old in terms of the, the design and the, the lines to it. Um, and it's not one of these arches that's really you know, super high, it's perfect, you get good headroom underneath it, but it's still in proportion to the boat, which is very good. Um, the arch serves as a support for your, your camper canvas tops. So we've got a rear bimini top that extends out from the back of the arch. We've also got a little piece that comes off the front. Uh, and then with the forward, and the, the forward section, the side sections and the aft section of the the canvas you can fully enclose the boat and it gives you makes all this um, living space even if the, the weather's against you. The other thing that the that the arch does is it provides um, a mounting point for your things like your TV antenna or your GPS antenna. And we've also got overhead lights in it. So if you can see that we've got little blue LEDs here which are perfect after dark. Uh, similarly if you're 
navigating after dark. We've got this little red LED, which is just stuff like this are the, the things that most boat builders don't do. Uh, and it just shows you the, the, the sort of the level of thought and attention to detail that's gone into the design of the boat right the way through. Um, so it's a really nice touch. Another big advantage with this radar arch, again, it's something you don't find on boats of this size. That, um, they tend to have rigid fixed arches. This arch actually hinges down and sits on the front of the windscreen. So for transport or for storage, um, you can drop the arch and it'll allow you, it'll allow you to get the boat into, uh, into a storage shed or we actually had to drop the arch to get the boat in here. So it's, it's a really good touch. Uh, and again, that mechanism is all working perfectly. This Doral Monticello has a really sort of big boat feel to the helm as well. It's well laid out. Um, it's got everything you need, and it's also uh, well kitted out in terms of uh, electronics. So, first of all, we've got this lovely um, wood and stainless steel effect steering wheel. That's a five position tilt as well. We've got a full range of uh, switches for all our 12 volt gear. We've got a full range of marine instruments as well. Um, we've got a digital uh, taco here that shows 227.6 hours on the clock which is virtually nothing for, I mean, for, a, for an engine like this with a Mercruiser D-Tronic, it's barely running. We've also got a digital depth sounder at the helm. We've got a, an additional Garmin 340C fish finder. Um, so that doubles up, it gives you a backup um, depth sounder and it also works as a fish finder if you are fishing off the boat. We've got a Navman tracker, uh, 5600 uh, GPS chart plotter. That's a big screen, it's a five inch screen. Uh, chart plotter and it would have been bang up to date back in 2004. It's a really good unit actually, I, I like them. Um, the Navmans are nice and easy to use and it's uh, preloaded with a chart of the UK and Ireland there as well. Um, we've got controls for our remote control searchlight on the, on the radar arch. We've got controls for our trim tabs on the transom. Um, and we've also got a, a Simrad VHF radio. Uh, again, it's in working condition. And then we've got some circuit breakers for uh, some of the 12 volt circuits. The throttle uh, shift lever falls easily to hand here, and we've got a, an integrated armrest, a padded armrest there as well. So it's a really nice quality feel to it. It's got everything that you could need up here. We've also got a little chart table over on the port side there. Um, so if you want to keep a paper chart on board, you can uh, keep that within easy reach of the helm too. Um, and the seat is perfect. It's got a flip up bolster, so you can stand um, or sit at an elevated position whenever you're. Uh, coming in the dock or things and then with the seat down you sit down comfortably behind the screen uh, with a clear a view ahead and also um, a little raised foot rest to brace yourself against the seat so um, yeah the helm position is really good and the boat performs uh, fantastic on the way we'll show you the, the water test footage but she gets up on the plane in around about six or seven seconds um, at uh, full speed, the boat's running at around about 37 or 38 miles per hour, which we clocked on the, the GPS. Um, so yeah, it, it, it is a sports boat, it handles like a sports boat, uh, and the performance is, is really good from the 250 horsepower Mercruiser diesel engine, as well as obviously the fuel economy is fantastic too. So we'll take a look in the engine bay and then we'll go downstairs. We've got two access hatches into the engine bay. This is just a quick inspection hatch, which is you can lift at any time. Um, and it gives you the opportunity to have a quick visual inspection in the engine bay and also get access to the dipstick as well um, so for your morning checks and things if you want to get into the, the engine bay proper we can lift the whole hatch we just have to remove one of the seat cushions and then this gives super access all the way around the engine so as I said we've got a Mercruiser 4.2 litre D-Tronic it's a really beefy unit it's a six cylinder engine, it's smooth running um, and it's got a pretty punchy uh, power delivery as well. The boat jumps up on the plane pretty quick. And like I said, it runs up to about 37 or 38 miles per hour uh, full throttle. The engine bay itself, as you can tell, is super clean. It's like the rest of the boat. The condition's fantastic. Um, there's virtually no evidence of any corrosion in there. The engine mounts and things are very good. Um, all the filters look pretty fresh. Um, the owner ha does have the a service record with the boat, um, and it was just recently uh, serviced and winterized actually at the end of this season. 
again with only 227 hours on the clock and there's loads of life left and uh, left and all the equipment on board Access out onto the foredeck is via these molded in steps and the open in the center section of the windscreen. The actual door itself, cockpit door, is just your standard sliding affair. But I really, again, another one of these really neat design touches is this little folding step that's integrated as part of the door. That's a common, a common problem whenever um, you're underway, is people naturally like to stand up at the front of the boat to see what's going on um, out front. And with these steps there, it's either you're standing really low down, or what more typically happens is people fall, you know, stumble down into the into the little the, the recessed well there. So just by providing that step, Doral have removed that potential problem. You can stand there, you can look forward, and you're not going to trip over or, or fall down there. So it's, again, it's the little things on this boat um, which really set it off and make it that, that bit different to the, your standard sort of sports cruiser. The cabin layout itself is pretty typical, um, but this has to be one of the best executed cabins I've seen on, a, on an entry level sports cruiser. I mean, the boat, it's a 26 foot boat, not counting this one platform, um, but it's its just really well done. They, they've, they seem to make 
the most use of the space. So you've got a nice wide um, companionway whenever you come downstairs. There's, there's room for two people to pass at the galley. The access into the aft cabin is really good, which we'll take a look at in, in a minute. Um, and there's great space around the around the table here, up at the at the fore peak of the the cabin. The, the fit and finish in here is fantastic. It has a really luxurious feeling to it. The quality of the joinery and the woodwork really is top notch. Um, and all the materials are just you know everything just feels um, high end. So then we get this Doral table again, like this is beautifully finished, lovely uh, lacquered uh, wooden table. Um, that again, because it's flared out at this end, it means that you can sort of fit more people around it and do more with it. So essentially, it's a four berth uh, boat. This table drops down, and there's an unfilled cushion that fills this area in. Um, and we've got a double bed up here. We've also got another double bed in the uh, in the aft cabin there. We've got a separate enclosed toilet compartment and we a really decent sized galley. So taking a look at the galley here, it's a decent sized. We've got um, plenty of equipment in it. We've got this uh, 12 volt, or dual voltage refrigerator actually, um, below the, the counter. We've got a single burner electric hob that work, works whenever you're plugged into shore power. We've also got a microwave here. We've got a pretty deep uh, sink uh, and mixer tap unit. We've got UK spec sockets here. We've got little um, under under covered lights. We've also got our um, all our control panel there for our um, shore power and 12 volt systems down in the cabin. There's lots of storage space as well. We've got decent sized cupboard shelved out there. Another little. Um, cupboard for hanging tea towels and things in. Um, and another really good touch actually downstairs is the fact that the the carpets are, are removable. Uh, nearly every other sports cruiser has fixed carpets in the cabin and they always get dirty. Um, the fact that this one has removable carpets means that if you are um, you know doing swimming and things and you know gonna be getting the cabin wet you can lift these carpets up and it's just a a moulded non-skid floor underneath that's easy to clean um, and means you can keep the carpets good. So these carpets are in very good condition actually. So up around the V-berth area here, again the upholstery and things all very luxurious. Another neat feature is the fact that we can lift up this uh, backrest here and it means you, you can extend the sort of leg room in the bed area so um, whenever you're sleeping you'd have that up um, it means you get a bit more length out of the, the V-berth area itself. We've got lots of storage down here as well. Um, obviously there's storage underneath the seats that we're sitting on here. Um, we've got storage um, around the, the seat backs as well. Um, and then we've got a couple of little dedicated storage units. We've got this hanging locker here, which is a, a, actually a full length hanging locker, which again is pretty uncommon in a boat of this size. But it means you can hang up um, coats and things without them gathering at the bottom of the locker. Uh, we've got a little magazine rack area. Uh, we've got another storage cupboard with the, the the stereo head unit lives in here as well. The boat does have a TV antenna mounted on the radar arch, and we've got the controls for it and the outlet for it here in the cabin. Now, there's no TV fitted. I, I would presume that a, an earlier owner has probably had a little portable TV that they, they've plugged in, as and when they've had it on board. But it wouldn't be too big a job um, to mount a TV in here. But putting the aerial in is always the most difficult part of it, so that that's been taken care of. So taking a look in the heads here, the sort of luxurious theme continues. We've got um, the same uh, dark Corian effect uh, counter on the little uh, sink and vanity unit there. Um, we've got storage in here, both above and below that counter, and we've got a pump out uh, Jabsco marine heads as well. The whole unit is obviously fully lined and drained. Uh, and doubles up as a shower compartment. There's also sockets in here and an open and port light and these little overhead lights. Again, I mean, even the you know the quality, the, the woodwork and the joinery in here is, is is great as well. Access into the aft cabin on the boat is really good. Again, it really is top notch for considering it's only a 26 foot boat. Again, it has a feeling of a much bigger one. So we've got a nice wide entryway here. We've got a couple of um, reading lights there in the. Uh, below the shelf unit. We've got an open and port light on the side of the boat and we've got another opening window there that uh, looks out onto the, the cockpit. So it, it gives this an unusually sort of airy and spacious feel. Normally these um, 
cabins tend to be very dark and a bit pokey but this one's actually pretty good there's a couple of storage lockers down in the end of the bed there um, and again a decent sized mattress that's a fuller cushion there for the uh, for the V berth as well um, so yeah again it's the same uh, high quality joinery in here and we've got a little curtain over the over the windows and we've got a nice little curtain to separate that off from the rest of the boat so you can have a bit of privacy in there the design touches that are through, dotted throughout this boat are fantastic. They, it, you can tell that the boat's obviously been built by people who um, spend time on boats themselves and understand the sort of little frustrations and, and niggles that can crop up um, from time to time. So the stuff like the extended cockpit where you get so much more space out in the cockpit whereas really where you're going to spend the majority of your time in a boat like this, that's fantastic. Other things like the um, the detail like a full length hanging locker, the fact that the 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 heads compartment is angled along the side of the boat to, that really opens up the space in the companionway downstairs, um, the fact that this little shelf here opens up so you can get more more leg room in the in the V berth, all those little things, while they might seem small, if you spent any time at all on board a sports cruiser or away on for weekends with your family, you'll realise that they're actually extremely important and they greatly contribute to your enjoyment of the boat so um, yeah it's it's this is a fantastic boat it's a really great entry level cruiser it has loads of big boat features um, and just so many nice design touches that it's, a, would, it's really going to be a, I know for a fact that it's going to be a pleasure to own condition wise this one's top notch it's been really well looked after it's done very little with only 227 hours on the clock um, it, like I said it's barely running and there's just so much going for it it's got a diesel engine so it's fuel you know the fuel economy is great the performance is good with because it's 250 horsepower and it's a 4.2 Maricruiser which is the best engine in their range um, it's also got you know the folding radar arts the full camper covers the extended swim platform and the trailer um, which was bought new for the boat only two years ago I think or three years ago which is in fantastic condition and really opens up your sort of cruising horizons and things like that so I really like this boat I think it's a gonna be a great buy for somebody and um, I think she's uh, she's fantastic value as well considering everything that you're getting if you're interested and you want to come and have a have a look at the boat or if you've got any questions please don't hesitate to get in touch just give me a call or drop an email um, to sales at gulfstreamshop.com or you can fill out our callback request form uh, and I'll get back to you at your convenience. Thanks for watching.